I will promise you this, that if we have not gotten our troops out by the time I am president, it is the first thing I will do. I will get our troops home. We will bring an end to this war. You can take that to the bank. Uh, yesterday, the international community demanded an immediate ceasefire in Libya, including an end to all attacks against civilians. Uh, today, Secretary Clinton joined an international coalition of our European and Arab partners in Paris to discuss how we will enforce UN Security Council Resolution 1973. Our consensus was strong and our resolve is clear. The people of Libya must be protected and in the absence of an immediate end to the violence against civilians, our coalition is prepared to act and act with urgency. And I uh, am briefing uh, President Rousseff on the steps that we are taking. The United Nations concluded in 1999 that Saddam Hussein had biological weapons sufficient to produce over 25,000 liters of anthrax. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. Our intelligence officials estimate that Saddam Hussein had the materials to produce as much as 500 tons of sarin, mustard, and VX nerve agent. In such quantities, these chemical agents could also kill untold thousands. Nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> the International Atomic Energy Agency confirmed in the 1990s that Saddam Hussein had an advanced nuclear weapons development program, had a design for a nuclear weapon, and was working on five different methods of enriching uranium for a bomb. Maybe under here. <laughs> the left-right paradigm is fundamentally a false dichotomy and you can tell this when people vote in part because of the common phrase if you vote for the lesser of two evils you still get evil notice that there is never a third option given to the public for if there was more competition in the political arena the public would realize just how similar the two major political parties actually are anyone who also watches the mainstream media can also see how the political pundits of the alleged left and right are similarly deceptive. They rarely, if ever, discuss in public the most important issues and instead focus on trivial problems. For example, they utterly refuse to hold the Federal Reserve accountable, yet both of them will screech about gay marriage? The left-right paradigm is essentially a tiny box reality that is inherently designed to limit the range of thought and therefore of political debate as well. Another example of this, that liberals want the welfare state, whereas the conservatives want the police state, but both are detrimental to all of our liberties. The biggest campaign contributors to both parties are usually high finance special interests. These financial special interests are what run Congress through puppet candidates. The two major parties support each other like two pillars forming an archway. This is more effective than a single party structure because the forces of popular resistance are dispersed. Instead of being unified against a singular entity that is their enemy. Voters do not realize that there is a larger power structure sitting on top of the partisan archway. This cap on the archway is a combination of several special interests so it is one unit that supports itself and is an effective apparatus for containing revolution. Conservatives and liberals both engage in social engineering schemes instead of limiting the amount of government intervention in the lives of the people. The Constitution lays out the rules for the proper role of government in the lives of the population. When politicians violate their oaths of office by stepping outside the limits of the Constitution, they prove by their actions that they are not at all interested in the liberties of the people and therefore deserve to be thrown out. What is needed are statesmen. They will not engage in schemes to trick the people who support their own despotic agendas, but who will instead value the liberty of the people by abiding the Constitution.